when I talk about the influence, a lot of these influence, all these things that you're looking at here were from my art teachers in high school. A little bit from um, the film aspects came more from college. But people, Frank Lloyd Wright I was obsessed with from a young age. Richard Diebenkorn is an absolute huge fan. I'm a huge fan of his work. Um, American um, West, West Coast painter, um, San Francisco based. Um, then film directors I adore, which you might, Terence Malick, um, makes beautiful landscape films, made a film called Tree of Life a few years ago. Um, this is a shot from a film called Badlands, which I love, back, made back in the 70s. So a lot, of, it's, when I show you some of the work, you'll see there's a lot of landscape elements in my work, and often very simple landscapes, and they relate a lot to American imagery from the, 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 the American westerns. Australian films I adore as well are things like um, The Proposition, film that came out a few years ago, set in the outback, any of the, you know, rabbit proof fence, films that involve the Australian landscape, Picnic at Hanging Rock, the colour, the light, all those elements feed into a lot of what I do as well. Um, John Ford, famous American film director. Um, once again, beautiful landscape, framing devices, things you'll see in my work as well. Often the work will be framed. Once again, you've got, a, you've got that macro element of giant image and within it is a smaller component that you can get into. Then we have... Australian artists, um, Rosalie Gascoigne, huge influence, obviously, and when you see my work and the way it's put together, there's definitely a, a connection there. Although my work, I would just, uh, uh, the, the biggest difference is my work is a lot more political and there's a lot more, I guess, pop culture reference. It's not, whereas it's hers was purely abstract, purely visual, purely about, you know, mood um, and feeling. A lot of my work has, you know, a more political content to it. Um, other people I grew up loving was, you might know this, Saul Bass was a famous graphic designer who did all the credit sequences for all of the Alfred Hitchcock films over the years. Fantastic, did the credit sequence for Psycho, for example. Beautiful work, very graphic. Um, so there's a very strong graphic element through my work as well. I have a graphic designer partner um, and that is, she's heavily influenced the way I view the world. A lot of my work, even I think, Having watched her work in graphics programs with all the little lines and, and, and all the little, you know, the increments and measurements and all these things, I, I found that subconsciously all entered into my work. So I was adding all this little detail, which sort of didn't really have, it wasn't needed to make the work speak in a way, but it adds there's rulers, there's measurements, because I work on the same process, but in a purely analog dimension. So with tape measures and, and all that sort of gear. But uh, Saul Bass, huge, the pop artists of the, you know, the 60s, um, Jasper Johns, probably my favourite pop artist from that era, um, Rauschenberg, Warhol, a lot of the Warhol I love. I love this particular Warhol just because I love what he hasn't done. He hasn't complicated his left out elements, which gives it a, a lovely simplicity. Um, some favourite films of mine, Charles Lawton uh, made a film in the 50s called Night of the Hunter, which is heavily influenced my work, very film noir, um, very dark, a lot of light and shade. Uh, another person, once again, this goes back to my art teachers. My, I just remember learning about Christo endlessly. I don't know whether Christo is still taught as a, as, but in, in the late 70s, early 80s, he was still very much in the public's mind um, from the Little Bay, you know, was back in the 60s, yes. But anyway, I remember doing a lot of work on Christo. Um, it's really daggy, but we wrapped our teachers' Volkswagen up in Hessian at, on our muck-up day at the end of the year, you know, which I'm sure it's been done before. Christo, Cindy Sherman, um, American photographer, very film noir works, um, all self-portraits. Um, I haven't kept up with her career, so it's stuck back in the 80s, so I'm not sure what she's been doing for the last 30 years. I'm sure she's moved on. Um, but absolutely adore her work. Um, and then other film directors, David Lynch I adore, Vim Vendors, Michael Mann, um, all very visual, very strong. Um, as a kid, Edward Hopper, with someone I loved, Joseph Cornell, American again, obsessive collector of, of objects. I mean, he's old. I mean, he's, we're talking the 20s, 30s, but he lived with his mum in sort of outside of New York, and he, you know, he, he had a, you know, his basement was full of obsessively kept little drawers with objects, and he'd keep every bus ticket he ever bought, you know, and every ticket to a baseball game. He'd built these sort of gorgeous, you know, box constructions. You know, Rosalie Gascoigne did similar work early in her career, and then she created, you know, which were, you know, I'll, I, I, would, I would say were very derivative, whereas she developed her own language later on, which is, which is stunning and extraordinarily original and, and very Australian. But Joseph Cornell, just to, because of his, um, his object collection, absolutely adored. And people like Ridley Scott, film director, 
adore Robert Klippel, big fan, an old friend of my father's as well, so I always grew up with Robert Klippel's work around me. People like Ed Ruscher, another American artist, a lot of film-based work. People like Kubrick, Sergio Leone, Spaghetti Westerns. Going back to imagery like this from, you know, Italian film posters all feed into what I do.